To start this video on uh, the AND logic gate, we're going to do a switch circuit. So we're mostly going to focus on the transistor circuit, but the switch circuit is uh, easier to understand. So to begin with, we have the uh, positive side of the power supply there. We're going to attach a switch. I have these push button switches here, these little ones that fit nicely into the breadboard. And as long as you insert it in the right direction, the top is always connected and the bottom is always connected. When you close the switch, you connect top to bottom. Now we have another switch in series. So you can see we come to that switch, jump down there, and then uh, we come over here. I added another jumper to uh, make spacing easy. And we'll throw this other switch in there. So again, it's always connected to top, always connected on bottom, but separated top to bottom. We have that gap until you press the switch. Now we have a resistor. We might as well zoom in to uh, get a better look now. We're going to put the uh, resistor in series and leave a gap to that jumper for the LED. So pretty straightforward there. There we go. We got that gap. Otherwise it goes to the switch. Now we'll throw the LED in there. Pretty straightforward. The cathode, the short lead, going to the negative rail. You can tell the cathode by the dash there. The anode is this side here. So this is a schematic symbol of a diode with arrows pointing out, which you can think of as light. So the uh, power supply is already on. And so now we'll look at what the AND gate does. So might as well zoom back now. Right now, both switches are off, so the output, the LED, is off. We can press the switch, the LED stays off. Even though we turn the one switch on, we turn the other switch on. LED stays off. We have to turn both switches on for the output, in this case, an LED load, to turn on. And so that's the basics of an AND gate. So now we come to the transistor circuit, and uh, we'll also do an integrated circuit version of uh, the circuit. But uh, we're going to take two NPN transistors, and we want the output to be high or on when both inputs are high. And uh, so let's uh, start off with the transistors. They're going to be 2N2222s. These are actually 2N2222As, but they'll work exactly the same. Well, the flat side is facing us. The pin on the left is the emitter. Pin on the middle is the base, and the pin on the right is the collector. And uh, so, the emitter is indicated by the arrow on the schematic diagram. The base is off to the side there, and collector is over there. And what we're going to do is just uh, fill in this gap here that I made with the jumpers. These pins are all bent. There we go. But uh, it went in. Not too bad. And then we're going to grab the uh, second transistor here. Again, same transistor, same pin layout. And by the way, this pin layout should be the same for any transistor that's in this packaging that looks like this. That starts with 2N. I haven't found one yet with a different pin layout. But uh, there we go. I'm going to set it right there. So you're going to notice here that uh, this jumper here is connecting the emitter of this transistor to the collector of this transistor. There we go. You can see it's at the uh, top there. So now we uh, can uh, add these resistors here now if we want. 10 kilo ohm resistor. So, their goal is to provide resistance from the power source because the base to emitter doesn't uh, really block uh, current on its own. It blocks about 0.6 volts, 0.7 volts, but after that, it pretty much lets it flow freely. We don't need much current, so we're going to use 10 uh, kilo ohm resistors and I should shuffle this one over there we go and we will just slap those on to the uh, base for now the middle pin 
of the uh, transistors. So there we go. Now, we have these two transistors in series right now. You can see positive comes here, comes to the collector, and then we got the emitter to collector over there. They're not going to conduct though until we give a positive signal, a positive voltage to uh, the base. So they're off. The power's not even on. The power, or the power supply is on. I should turn that off actually. And uh, but they're normally off. So in any case, we need this 10 kilo ohm resistor to go to ground because we want current to flow without uh, depending on the load. The LED is going to block some voltage and stuff. So we want a path to ground, even, no matter what the uh, load is doing. So I'll grab. Uh, another uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor there you go and put that directly to ground now I'm going to take a 220 ohm resistor and uh, so we're pretty much done with the circuit itself we're just adding a load here and uh, 220 ohms to protect the LED we might as well zoom in now so I can see a little bit better there you go so I'll put that at the emitter of that transistor. Straighten the leads a little bit. There we go. And then leave a gap for the LED. There we go. And the LED. So now I'm going to turn the uh, power on. As you can see there. And uh, we're not getting anything. So. We could uh, throw switches in here or whatever. I'm just going to take a jumper. So got that jumper there. You can see nothing's happening. If I put the jumper to this one, we are getting a faint glow. So we probably should have used a lower value uh, resistor there. There we go. And uh, let's get this other jumper over here. And now you can see that it is really on. So there are problems with uh, this circuit. Ultimately though, on and off is five volts or for on and zero volts for off in that range. You can go slightly below five volts or slightly above zero volts. Uh, but we pretty much consider five volts on and zero volts off for most uh, digital circuits. So even with the LED fairly lit, it's probably close to zero volts. So now I swapped out the 10 kilo ohm resistor for a 1 kilo ohm resistor. And if I yank that one, now you can see the LED is uh, fully off. And so we have a much better uh, AND gate there. Of course, if I remove that one, the LED goes off too. And uh, so, in any case, I should have did a 1 kilo ohm there. I'll uh, change the diagram before I save it anywhere else but uh, it still worked with the 10 kilo ohm just not as well so now we come to the integrated circuit and uh, this makes things a whole lot easier and works a whole lot better we'll look at that coming up so in any case this is the uh, part number for it SN74HC08N made by Texas Instrument you want to Google that and uh, look up the data sheet for all the specifics on it. But it is a quadruple. You can see there's four of them. Two input. They have two inputs. Positive and gates. So when the inputs are positive, the output is positive. So let's begin with the uh, load this time and see what uh, one of the things about this integrated circuit is. So I have it here, pin layout. By the way, we're just going to use this one. So there's four AND gates total. We're just going to use this one down at the bottom corner. Pretty straightforward. There's the output and the two inputs are the uh, pins up there. And uh, so we can look at this. We're going to do the load. And so a one kilo ohm resistor, this is not intended to output a lot of current. So we're just barely going to output enough to light an LED fairly decently. I was at a weird angle. There we go. So we got the protective resistor, a 1 kilo ohm resistor, and an LED. 
So now when we had the transistors in this position and we uh, turn the uh, power on, the output was off. But here you can see that the output is on. And that's because we cannot leave these pins floating. It, it didn't hurt anything, but I wrote that down here. Don't leave an input pin floating. And so we are going to take 10 kilo ohm resistors, exact value, not uh, terribly important, and uh, connect them to the uh, two input pins. Let's go down here and uh, connect them to ground. I think I had that in the positive rail there. So there we go. We got uh, that one to our ground and then to our pin, what is that, 9 up there, pin 10. We will also put to the uh, positive rail there. Or, sorry, negative rail. There we go. Now, when we uh, turn the power on, the output should be off. There we go. So, that's how we want it set up in this particular case. Now, we will take a jumper and use that as the switch to go from uh, the positive side of the power supply. And this integrated circuit, by the way, this particular one's only rated for a power supply of 2 to, I think it's 6 volts. And other ones have different voltage ratings. There's a number of, uh, I think a number of quad dual input uh, integrated circuits for the AND gate. And uh, so you got to make sure you look up and see what its limitations are. This one's 2 to 6 volts, and it's not intended to output much current. But in any case, we will... Put, uh, let's do this one first. Why not uh, pin number 10? And we will put it to the positive rail. And of course, nothing happens right now because the other input is at the negative rail. So let's take a jumper and uh, see if I can get it right next to the resistor. So it's a little easier to see there. There we go, to the other input. Now we'll connect that to the positive rail, even though it's a blue jumper. And now you can see that the output is on. Of course, we remove this one. Now we have a uh, negative signal going to uh, pin number 10. So they're not both positive, so the output is off. It's negative or low. However you want to look at it, zero volts. And uh, so the integrated circuit uh, does a lot better job than uh, the transistor circuit. But uh, I use the transistor circuit to uh, in a transistor video more to learn about how the transistors work than the uh, AND gate circuit. But in any case, it's a pretty straightforward circuit, the uh, AND gate. So I figured I would show the uh, integrated circuit that I have too. So now let's look at it from this angle. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, unplug those jumpers. Set them over uh, into uh, completely blank rows and take out the uh, resistors. Let's yank that one first and put them to the uh, positive rail and then put that one up to uh, pin number 10 up here, one of the inputs. And then uh, do the same thing to a pin number 9. So now we have pull up resistors. Before we had pull down resistors they went to the negative rail and we were able to directly connect the uh, positive rail to the pin because it's not really letting any current flow through. So now we're going to take this jumper and uh, plug it to the uh, negative rail there and then carefully plug it. Let's go to a uh, pin number 10 again and the LED went off because one of the inputs is negative right now. If I yank it out, it's back on. So everything's fine. We're uh, directly to the negative rail there. And of course, we can do that with uh, the other jumper too. So, we don't have to hold uh, the voltage down with the resistors and then have the input go high. We could uh, hold the pins high and then have our switch, in this case the jumpers, pull it down. So there again, 
remove that. But the other one is to the uh, negative rail. So whatever energy gets through the resistors is going to go right to the uh, negative rail. The pin's not going to uh, sense it. There we go. We got a better look. Until, of course, we yank it out again. So you can either hold them low and then have a high signal trigger them or you can have them high and then have a low signal trigger them but uh, the main takeaway as long as both of them both inputs are high the output is going to be high if either one of the inputs is low then the output is going to be low alright so I know it's late in the video for covering this but uh, I'm pretty happy with the video so far I don't want to uh, reshoot any of it so we'll just throw this in at the end here is the schematic symbol for the AND gate we saw this earlier we have A for one of the inputs B for the other and Y for the output and uh, that appears uh, to be part of boolean logic which I really haven't studied but uh, if you study a lot of digital electronics it's going to be something really important to you and uh, there you can see again we got the schematic symbol right there so within the integrated circuitry we have circuitry for four AND gates and uh, so three pins devoted to uh, each AND gate plus we gotta power it and everything but in uh, any case you see the AND gate uh, schematic a lot that just indicates AND gate circuitry a lot easier to uh, look at this and know uh, what it is than uh, a whole bunch of uh, transistors and everything that is involved with making them there's also the uh, truth table here so in this particular case zero was zero volts ground one was five volts and uh, we applied five volts at the pin and at both pins we got five volts out we could also consider this high and then uh, zero lows there's a number of ways you can talk about it on or off uh, depends on uh, what exactly the circuit is doing but in any case it's a true table all the logic gates have them and uh, by the way this AND gate has two inputs there's also AND gates with three or four the main premise is the same though if you have four inputs all four inputs have to be high for the output to be high otherwise the output's going to be low if it, even a single one of them is low and uh, the true table shows that you may see a true table for uh, three inputs or four inputs but again we have uh, input A input B if uh, both of them are low the outputs going to be low if just one of them is low the outputs low same with that one there's four conditions for this particular uh, AND gate if both of them are high on 5 volts whatever you want to say then the output is going to be high 5 volts or on 